Hey, I bet you would love to find a genie in a bottle. Wouldn't you? You walk on the beach and then you see that thing and then you rub it off and then the genie comes out. There you go, you got all your wishes. <laughs> Last month, I had a video about that idea, the genie in the bottle. I was going through a movie that I watched on Netflix with my wife and the story was really good. I couldn't stop thinking about the genie. So that's what I wanna talk about today. This is gonna be a good video. This is gonna help you think about a lot in your life. So let's go. So we talked about the movie that I watched uh, a while ago, this genie in the bottle, it's a new version and how the genie comes and grants you all the wishes and life is happy forever after. And the, the bad news is the genie is a lie. The genie thing is a lie, it's a myth, it's a legend. <laughs> But it was an interesting concept. And like I said, I couldn't stop thinking about the genie itself, not the guy with the wishes being granted, but genie. In the movie, genie is this nice lady. She's, she's portrayed to be this very funny, very polite, easy to, easy going with anyone. And she goes on through the movie, just granting wishes left and right. You know, the guy is a workaholic and he wants to get his family back and she's having a great time. But here is an interesting thing. Kind of halfway through the movie, you start to notice that in her face, you can see a little bit of worry. She's worried. And you don't know why she's worried until they have a conversation. And that conversation goes around the topic of boredom. She relates that being around for such a long time, thousands and thousands of years, she's been in that situation many a times. But at a certain point, they come to the realization that life is not about the material things and they're not happy anymore. They, they, just, they just feel bored and nothing else fills them anymore. And for the sad part of the genie story, once that happens, generally, the masters, the people who rub out on the land, they are granted three final wishes because after that, the genie is gonna go back in the bottle, the bottle is gonna disappear until the next person finds it. And she starts to get worried because this guy, you know, is living the dream. He's living in the best place. He's got a Ferrari. And she's like, okay, that time is coming close. But they become good friends. And she relates to him that she, she will probably be back in the bottle soon. And the guy starts to think. Now the second half of the movie, it starts to get really sentimental because the guy starts to think about how the genie is being good to him, how, she helped him see things in life properly. Not just because of the wishes he was granted, but because of what he noticed that he was leaving behind. Because that's the idea of the three wishes. People get three wishes granted when they find the genie in the bottle, according to the legend, because they are too focused on what they don't have and they forget what they do have. They are too focused on what they want to accomplish and they forget what they have accomplished. They are too focused on the perfect scenario with family and everything and they forget they already have a family and everything. And that's why he's grateful to the genie in that movie. Now here's the twist, or like my daughter says, plot twist. <laughs> here's the plot twist. It's something that in their movie, in the legend, the genies in the bottles, they know and one of the interesting books in the Bible, the book of Ecclesiastes, written by Solomon, the wisest man to have ever lived on earth. He wrote uh, a book here called Ecclesiastes. And here's what he said. After all is said and done, after everything is settled, in other words, after all lights go down and the party is over, the only thing left for man is to fear God and to obey his commands. That is the original purpose of man. Jeannie knew it, Solomon knew it, you and I, we both know. That's the only thing, like there's a, there's a philosopher that says, uh, his name is Blaise Pascal. He says that inside man, there is a void, a vacuum that cannot be fulfilled by any created things, only by the creator. And what I think it's interesting is that not only Solomon knew it, but Jesus knew it. Jesus found the purpose of his life in serving. Jeannie, found the purpose of her life, at least in the movie, in the legend, in serving. You see, when they are the happiest, when Jeannie is the happiest, is when she is granting wishes to her master. 
that's when she's the happiest. So much so that in this video that we've been talking about, through the second half of the video, the guy thinks about it and then the final day comes when he has three less wishes before she goes back in the bottle. So he wishes one thing and the second thing and life is perfect. At this point in time, his wife is back, daughter is back, everything is restored. So he comes down to the last wish. Very tense moment. They are in the public square. Jeannie looks at him, he looks at Jeannie and she knows it's coming. She's ready to go back in the bottle. But the guy says, this is my last wish. I wish you were free forever. I wish you were free to do whatever you want. And she's shocked. So she double checks with him. Are you sure? And then she triples check with him. Are you 100% sure? Because once that wish is granted, there's no way back. You're gonna be free forever and you can't have any other wish. And the guy says, I'm sure. And then, you know, the magic happens. The guy falls asleep, goes back to his normal life as if nothing had happened. Only he knows everything that had happened, but nobody else knows, like everything is restored. And then you think, okay, the movie's finished. And before the, 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 the characters come up, that last scene comes, it was brilliantly made. The last scene comes, the guy is walking on the sidewalk, taking his wife to a simple pizza. Not fancy, just a simple pizza, because he, remember, he's got everything. So they walk into the restaurant, and who walks out as a waiter? A genie. She's there serving people because that's in, his, that's in her essence. Out of her free will, she chose to go back and serve people. In the movie, she, you know, she finds the love of her life. They buy a restaurant and she chooses to be a servant for the rest of her life. And she's there serving pizzas. Now that is a great plot twist. That was beautiful. What does that have to do with anything good for our lives? Here's a lesson for you. Jesus Christ being free, like he's not the genie in the bottle, I get it, <laughs> but being free, being God actually, when the time came, he did not consider being God anything to be grasped, anything to be bragging about. He didn't consider being God like a, wow, I'm the man. But no, he literally turned himself into a man. He put away all of the God privileges and he became a man. He came down to earth, lived as one of us, never sinned, so that at the end of his journey, he served with his life. He died on the cross, he was humiliated so that you and I wouldn't have to be humiliated because of our sins. And at the end of that, he died, but three days later, like the scene in the movie that you think he has finished, death thought that they had it all under control, but Jesus resurrected. He proclaims the victory. He goes back, and then the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, that when, when he goes back, he gets a name that is above every name. So that, or a, a name that is above every name, to which every knee one day will bow, and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Now, why am I telling you this? If Jesus, being God, chose to serve, and if we are made in his image, what do you think is the original purpose of your life when you fear God and obey his commandments? I'll tell you, the original purpose of your life is to serve. When you choose, out of your own volition, out of your own will, to put your life aside to serve others, you transcend. Ancient heroes and warriors knew that. They lived their legacy through the lives of the people who came after them. That's what we do. We transcend in our service. We serve because Jesus, being our example, our older brother, being God, came not to be served, but to serve. And we, to follow that example, because we are followers, we serve and we don't aim to be served. Jeannie knew it. A lot of people in the ancient times knew it. Jesus knew it, and you and I, we know it. The best way to transcend and find purpose in your life and to fear God and obey His commandments is to serve. Find a way to serve with your gifts, time, resources. Just put yourself in that position. You will see. Life will be fulfilling.
And I hope this has inspired you. I hope you feel inspired by the story of Jeannie. And if the story of Jeannie doesn't inspire you, there's a better story. There's the story of Jesus right here. Read this story and how he served you and how he put all of that for you before you did anything. And if that doesn't inspire you, I don't know what will. <laughs> I hope you have a great day and thank you for watching to this point. Thank you for watching this far. There is a lot of links in the description of the video. One of them is a link for you to join our mailing list so you'll be alerted, uh, alerted every time um, there is a new video. And with that said, I wish you a great week. I'll see you next Friday or when the next video comes up. God bless. So it's a good day. Na, 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 na.